Let's see. Okay. Yo, Bean Cheeks, thank you for the $20 super chat. <laughs> Men have to earn slash work for their value. Women are born with their value. Easy to maintain by being healthy, virgin, slash low body count, and you'll get a good average man or top 20% easily. Actually, this does kind of bring us back to the conversation we we're having about the double standards. I don't know if we really wrapped that up in that you were, you were complaining, or not complaining, you were saying how... Um, Oh, <laughs> you were saying how if a guy has a high body count, he shouldn't judge a woman for having a high body sure. count. And we were sort of talking about, well, there is a bit of a difference between men and women mm. as to uh, the double standard. Mm. And I think that's commonly, you know, it goes. Wi the way it's usually viewed is women are viewed as sluts and men are viewed as studs. Mm -hmm. That's typically how it's yeah. viewed. Girls are shamed for it, right? And men are kind of like, "Congrats, you're you're a champ, you're a legend, da da da, whatever." And also, since the beginning of civilization, women have been frowned upon for being promiscuous. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, even in biblical times, I think yes. they get stoned. So, since the dawn of history being recorded, women were supposed to have one partner. Mm -hmm. I would add men too. Two, like Well, the kings back then had way more than one. But I'm talking, okay, like in Western... And I'll, Western I'm not, society? Western because days. of Christian, Christianity. So male... Ch That's a new concept, if you think about well, it. Well, 2,000 years. Only, well, only oh, are you looking past, back like couple, caveman days only, and shit? No, only the couple past a couple hundred years have we really decided a monogamy is the way to go. Well, mm, I'm not... I mean, Christianity has been around for over 2,000 years, so both male and female chastity was valued but as a man, up until 50 years 50 60 but 70 years still, ago still regard, regardless of monogamy or polygamy the man who could get the women was still respected he wasn't sure okay so it. okay you're talking like kings and sultans regardless they had if you're a king, and, well, yeah but the kings every king had handmaidens and let's bill clinton Huh? Let's talk about Bill Clinton. Wait, what? <laughs> it's over. Whoa. <laughs> Monica uh, Lewinsky. Train of thought. <laughs> Some Monica Lewinsky <laughs> shit. A oh, word? Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Hillary stayed with let, him. Let me, that, that is true. Um, let me get these other soup chats. Yo, Shane M, thank you for the $20 soup chat. The fact is all men want girls that not just any man can have, but average men have enough trouble finding women and can't force that preference. High value men can because 50% of all of women are all going out for the top 20% of all men. I love these and the funny thing we're is, all just pulling out of 20% of all men, is it 20% of men have 80% of the women or all 100% of the women? I think it's something along the lines of, and obviously these probably are not exact numbers, but 80% of women are chasing after the top 10, top 20% of men. And actually, you know what? We do have a video on this, um, and we have some stats that we can pull up too. Um, but Eric, why don't you pull up a video that's semi-related to this that can kind of articulate what's going on. Um, go to the videos tab. It's uh, the JP... It should be the first one. Yeah, go for it. Well, it, it seems a lot of the uh, women's liberation movement of late, the sexual liberation and, that you spoke about, it, it seems to advantage men far well, more than well, women. Uh, no, no, it doesn't. Well, it because they get the no, sex without the responsibility. Yeah, 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 but it, it doesn't disadvantage men. It disadvantages a very small proportion of hyper-successful and increasingly Holiday Gaming men. Super Chatted $50. It disadvantages most Why is it that when a man talks about girl in not so good light, they think we hate them? I'm sure that I can speak for most guys when I say you can do it, but we will judge. Aw, oh, so you don't hate me? Did he say beat them? <laughs> yeah. Hate, hate, hate. He said hate. Keep, keep playing it. <laughs> Sorry, guys. We had a TTS come in during the video. Don't because hate Because what happens me. is that when the sexual constraints are lifted off women, they all migrate to a very small percentage of men, 5% maybe, and then those men have an almost unlimited field of sexual access. And so you could say that's a benefit to them, but it's not because it trains them to be manipulative, Machiavellian, instrumental psychopaths because all they're doing is pursuing a string of pleasure-based, hedonistic, short-term relationships. That's bad training if you want to be a reciprocal human being and if you want to learn how to participate in a real relationship. 
So, and then it's a catastrophe for the women because none of those men are incentivized to, to form anything that approximates a long-term relationship. And then the rest of the men are left with nothing. Yeah, so that's... That's, that's disastrous, Mrs. Sonny. Disastrous, yeah, it's a disastrous, Chris. Wow. Any reaction to that, anybody? You gotta love Jordan Peterson. Yeah, so basically what's kind of happening now, you've, you've uh, what was the term he used? It was uh, something de deregulated the sexual marketplace. So when that happens, basically, and we have the data to back this up from dating apps. How do most people meet nowadays? Online, they meet on dating apps. Women swipe no on like 90% of guys. They're all swiping on the same guys. So those, all those guys at the top, they're gonna get all the girls. There's no incentive for them to commit. So they're gonna keep you around for sex, but they'll never commit to you. Men will sleep down. So we'll sleep with a girl who's less attractive than, than us because sex why not? why not and then but those guys won't commit so women are chasing after these really attractive guys and it's so it's he he says it's bad for those guys and i don't know where i stand on that but it's bad for most women and it's bad for most men ultimately because and we see it playing out people aren't getting into relationships and we see a rise in male like we, eric can you pull up that uh, that thing from the Washington Post, the study they did with the uh, who's reported sexlessness in the past. Uh... You know, it's crazy. They say that by 2030, 50% of women will be single. I see that. We're all dating each other now. On the way. <laughs> Facts, we're all over the men population. That's why we're single. Wait, what? I said, because we're all over the male population, what's left? Well, you're over the. 10 or 20 percent of men that are treating you poorly which is most of the population 20 percent is not most of the population the, no i'm saying the way that they act and we're over that the way that they act a good majority of them it's gotten really old the same game okay but have you ever said that the guy's too nice have i ever said that somebody's too nice i don't know if i've said they're too nice see as the guy that used to be too nice, you can't be too nice. They don't want it. I've given nice guys a chance. Okay, but why is, then, then why is there a trope of women being attracted to bad boys and jerks and assholes? You got women, I think it's more women are the, hold on, sorry. women are the gatekeepers of sex. You choose who you sleep with. If you're consistently sleeping with shitty men, you have nobody to blame but yourself. You disregard the guys that would be loyal, good partners, but they don't excite you. How often do you hear girls say, I didn't feel the connection. I didn't feel the vibe. I didn't feel the chemistry. There wasn't a click. I don't You're looking for some sort of excitement that only guys who are either assholes, jerks, or bad boys are going to be able to elicit. Again, I think that's subjective. I, per personally speaking, I have given nice guys a chance, and I have definitely felt a connection with douchebags I've felt a connection with guys that were awesome but I think that the I think that there should be a form of excitement no matter who they are whether they're nice or they're not there should be something to look forward to do you think a good relationship a long-lasting relationship the foundation of that has anything to do with how excited someone makes you mm, I don't know if excited is the word well women live their life based on they crave drama if you have that's you have to bring drama to the woman's life in some fair. shape, way, or form. <laughs> no, women crave drama. They they what do they do when they get together and they they're with their friends? They talk about other girls. They talk Everybody's about problems. Everybody's very biological. Not my friends and I. We talk. It, I I think it's important to be with somebody that that you can learn from and that you can also teach and is willing to learn from you as well and more about intellectual intellectuality as opposed to being too nice or being too mean. And I, and I don't think excitement would be the word. You're like turned on by smartness. Yeah. Intellect. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Intellect and um, I don't know, like somebody that's actually goal driven and going towards something. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I, I mean, I kind of disagree with the whole, are you talking about ambition, ambitious men? Yeah. 
Honestly, I don't think women really care all that much about ambition. But we're telling you we do. I Both think it depends would, on the would, girl. I would, I would say ambitious. they do. I want well, an ambitious let, guy. Let me, let, me just, <laughs> let me qualify my statement. Women are attracted to ambitious men who have reaped the rewards of said ambition. Not true. Not true. true. Not true. true. I, am one of, I am the most ambitious man in Santa Barbara. Okay, That's maybe. not true at all either. Women but. aren't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty damn ambitious. Yes, sure. Women aren't busting down the door to date me because of my ambition. They don't. It's not like so much true, goal but oriented. That's a huge turn on. Like, do you state that? Like for. in your day, like, do you, are you like like do you express that you are ambitious? Well, he no, has, that's a that's weird to say. So by then, the way, then I'm a girl so just isn't gonna know. You know what I mean? But also, look, ambition they're gonna shows know. Your, look they around can you. See. <laughs> ambition is but showing what if, your what behavior. What if she doesn't know? Maybe See, it goes back to you splitting the bill on the first. Yeah. Well, you exhibit your ambition <laughs> from your behavior be. and the things you talk about and the way you present yourself. I think the ultimate thing, um, if I can do a little psychoanalysis, that might be preventing someone like you from attaining your dream girl is just that you have this block where you think about so much about body count, so much about her being a high value woman, instead of just going to the date, finding someone you connect with, and then seeing like, could I build a family with this person? Is this someone who's gonna be loyal to me, accountable, somebody I can trust? Will this be a good mother? How does she react in terrible situations? These are the questions that you should be asking your future partner. And as a woman, I'm looking for somebody also accountable. Is he going, am I gonna need to remind him every weekend to help me with shit? Or or is he going to be out there doing it? And that body count doesn't really factor in for me, even though I don't have a high body count. I'm just looking for somebody who's going to like be my solid partner. You know? I mean, so so you're saying your dating advice to me is that I'm going in with what too much little, expectations? I don't even think no. it's expectations. I think it's judgment. I think you're like going turn, in with turn these. this into uh, mic, please. a little like too much judgment instead of taking into account all these other things you're focused on these like minuscule things and you're minuscule i mean body you're just count? not you're not taking you're just doing body count that's like so physical like are you not you're focused too much on the past too you're not really focused as much present. towards someone's present and future what they're what they're working towards see, like that see, from what this, you've told us okay thank you for the feedback here's the here's what's so funny to me is I think women are unaccustomed to hearing men communicate and articulate their preferences, standards, and boundaries. Women are the queens, or maybe the kings, I don't know, of going for exactly what they want. You guys have laundry lists of criteria that a guy needs to meet. Y'all swipe left on like 90% of dudes, so you're talking about physicality. Women are much harsher judges of if we're speaking of physical attraction, women are far harsher judges of men on physical uh, attractiveness than men are towards women. As far as like stats, we as men, we really don't ask for a lot. Women will have literally a list of shit that a guy has to meet. Mm -hmm. He's got to be tall. He's got to be good looking. He's got to be great in bed. He's got to be all these things. We as men, we don't ask for a lot, but the things that we do ask for matter a lot. So it's just funny, like men are not allowed to have preferences, standards, and boundaries. 